Meet Topiris terrestris, the lowland tapir. Tapirs may look like a strange mixture of pig and deer, but they are actually more closely related to rhinoceroses and horses. At the turn of the 21st century, the scientific and conservation communities were aware of four distinct species of tapir. The lowland tapir can be found throughout much of South America, including the Amazon rainforest and the Pantanal floodplain. The endangered Baird's tapir is larger than the lowland tapir. Its range is confined to a handful of countries in Central America. The mountain tapir is smaller and has a woolly coat. It is adapted for life in the Andes mountains, and its range is now limited to the highlands of Peru, Ecuador and Colombia. Far to the east, the Malayan or Asian tapir is the only known species of tapir outside the Americas. This is the largest and most distinctive tapir species with a unique light and dark pattern across its body. Four distinct species of tapir, each living in varied habitats, each adapted to a different climate and diet. In 1912, Theodore Roosevelt led an expedition deep into the Amazon rainforest. He was invited to a private farm, where local hunters told him there were two distinct kinds of tapir, the lowland and a second, smaller, black tapir. One of the smaller, dark tapirs was shot, and it was sent to the United States for identification. Before the advent of DNA and genetic testing, this specimen was labelled the lowland tapir. But 90 years later, in 2002, paleontologist Mario Cuzual was about to make a stunning discovery. And uh, at that time, uh, a student of mine was starting a project with fossil tapirs from the lead Pleistocene of Rondonia, of Amazon. <clears throat> and uh, the first thing I asked her is to gather all the living tapirs, schools around in different collections uh, to compare for com cooperation sakes. So one of these days he came to me with a school that said this is quite strange and we start to compare this school with others. So uh, we start to make comparisons and uh, ask for more information on other tapis and in the middle we go to the locals. Uh, Indians, um, river, river people, uh, farmers, so on, and ask about tapirs. And uh, surprisingly for us, all of them say, of course, there are two kinds of tapirs here. The small little one, they call Pretinia, and the large one that have diverse names, they call Zapatera and other names, uh, more clear in color in general. So we asked to some uh, zoologist that we know, because I am a paleontologist, uh, and they said, oh so yes, the people say that, but you know, people sometimes are confused, but we noted that no one checked it, so we decided to check it. Well, in 2003, together with Mario Cozual, uh, we had a meeting about the possibility of this new variety of tapirs, and he didn't know what was it like, because it was completely different from the other tapers in the collection, including the old bones, fossil bones, and we tried to get the DNA sequence out of it. It was a tough job because it was an old material, or at least 40 years old uh, hunted animal found in the middle of the, the edge of a river, decomposed, so we got some just a small sequence, 200 bases of a small part of DNA of this animal. It was different, but it was not enough. But anyway, it was curious at that time, and we, we had to get new samples. So since 2005, we started looking for it. Okay? And uh, through our interviews and collaborators, we, we mapped the region in Rondonia. We went there, we were able to get samples, at least two at this time including a very fresh material recently hunted for 
by by hunters or by local hunters there, and we got the sequence. When you got the first sequence, yes, it was completely different. It was like a a sign lineage, what we call in genetics, you know, is a sister group of the all other tapirs in South America. For instance, it is more differentiated genetically from the other tapirs than, for instance, the mountain tapir that we know that morphologically is quite differentiated, is adapted to a highland altitude environment. And what this guy in the middle of the Amazon living together in sympathy with other species, they the common lowland tapir. What is it doing there? Then, in 2009, Mario's team would collect a set of camera trap images of a pair of tapirs that matched the skulls and bone structures he was researching. These tapirs were indeed shorter and darker than most lowland tapirs, and the male showed skull differences consistent with the Kabumani tapir specimens Mario had collected. In 2013, Mario and Fabricio made their announcement to the scientific community and made world news. Some members of the scientific community have disputed the status of this discovery, but Mario and Fabricio are confident that the Carbomani tapir is indeed a new species. In September of 2018, their team led a survey expedition to the very location Theodore Roosevelt had visited over a century earlier. Fabricio explores a new approach to gathering DNA samples that might almost have been torn straight from the pages of Jurassic Park. These are Malaysia traps just to collect the flying insects and we hope that here we can find a lot of mosquitoes and other hematophagous insects that can have blood of the local animals, the vertebrates here. Among them we hope to find Cabo-Man uh, blood, so it is a kind of genetic survey of the area using the hematophagus, the hematophagus insects that can, it is another type of inventory of mammals and birds that are in this region here. There are jaguars here, and what is good for a jaguar can be bad for a tapir. But what is bad for a tapir can be good for a paleontologist. Humorous, humorous, keep humorous. Tapirs are very common here, but uh, there are also the cats, especially uh, jaguars. And sometimes the jaguars get uh, one tapir and, and kill it. This is a case, it's an adult. Uh, lowland tapir, which you can see the crest, of the sagittal crest uh, going forth uh, to the parietalux uh, frontal limit, and then the third molar shows that this was an adult. So it's a big animal, but it was killed for a big cat. Mario and Fabricio were also able to observe and study living Carbomani tapirs at first hand. But they still have work to do to help gather international acceptance and conservation status for this little dark tapir. Uh, we are in a point now that the uh, identification of a species is uh, reasonably well, I think. But of course there are a lot of dark points for this. We need to expand the knowledge of the morphology, both external and internal. Uh, we want to, to have samples, uh, specimens, from which we can take both external, internal and DNA for all the same individual. This is one of those points. The other point is to know how two species of tapir manage to get different from the, the, the middle Pleistocene, 600 thousand years ago, uh, up to now, living side by side. And this need to know how they use the space, how they use the resources, if there's different I mean, in, in, in uh, feeding, if there's difference in reproduction, if there's difference in using the areas, how? And this need more, a lot of more work. This is our goal now.
But regardless of its status in the eyes of the international conservation community, this small dark tapir seems content to be left well enough alone.